All right, good morning, guys. It is like 7.30-ish in the morning. It's kind of early. Peach and I, is that, that's your asshole. Thank you, thank you for, for showing. We are going on a special adventure. And by adventure, I mean literally like across the street. So I've done sprinting, you know, bodybuilding for years, lifting, rock climbing even recently, but today, Today I want to try uh, I want to try something new. We're gonna be doing a new sport, one of the most difficult, perhaps challenging sports ever. We're gonna be trying. If nautical nonsense be something you wish, then drop on the deck and flop like a fish. All right, guys. So here's the story. I got this river down behind uh, my house where I live, and I, I walk my dog by it sometimes. This one time, you know, the other day, I wanted to go down by the riverbank, and I look inside, and I swear to God, I don't know what the fuck these are, but they look like friggin' dinosaurs. Like I've seen fish in my life. When I was a kid, I used to go fishing with my dad. My parents would, you know, we'd go camping or something, and I would catch these little like these little sunfish. They're like four or five, maybe six inches. They're like the size of your hand, and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm used to that kind of stuff. And I thought that the big fish live in the ocean, so it's looking here and I was like honestly like what the fuck is that it looks like the Loch Ness Monster and except there's like 30 of them and they're like right here behind my house pretty much on Lake Ontario so I was like you know what I haven't done this in a while it's been like 10 years since the last time I've been fishing but we're gonna give it a try so long story short I went down to my local Walmart picked up god knows what in terms of gear because again I don't know what the hell I'm doing but I've seen river monsters I can figure it out right well not exactly. I was out here for two hours and I caught fucking nothing. But it was still kind of cool. Either way, I just thought I would uh, include a little bit of that. A lot of you guys are always asking, Igor, what do you do besides, you know, YouTube lifting and, and essentially talking about lifting? Well, that's pretty much 95% of my life. But the other 5% sometimes... Uh, I do stuff like this. Oh yeah, and if any of you guys have any advice, I could sure as hell use it because obviously I don't know what the fuck I'm doing and these fish, whatever the hell they are, they don't want my worm because apparently they're just, you know, too good for it. They're just too self-entitled little piece of shit, motherfucker, piece of shit, fuck. Okay guys, so quick summary of what I want to talk about uh, today. What's on the docket for today's video? Number one, I do want to go over what my next steps are. A lot of you guys have been asking me like, all right, Igor, you know, your bulk is done. Obviously your last video, you showed your final physique and your new bench press PR hit 350 pounds. What's next? Obviously like I am no longer officially, you know, trying to train and eat specifically to bulk up, get bigger, get stronger. I mean, if those things happen, that's great. But that's no longer my specific goal. What's going on? And then one more thing is, okay, so we like, in my last video, we obviously talked about like, these are my strength numbers. This is what I hit. But is that good? Is that strong? And like, not just like subjectively, like, oh, I think that's good or this or that compared to me or my friends or other guys in my local gym. But objectively, is that good against the standard? And if so, what is the standard? There actually are some calculations that I personally use, which like pretty much objectively tell you what your level of strength is against an objective uh, overall standard. Like, first of all, we have to explain what the standard is, and then where do you sit on that? I'm gonna walk you guys through like the, the rationale and the calculations based on how I do it. You guys can probably like walk along with me and apply the same logic and calculations to your own strength, your own numbers, your own weight, experience level. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna really help a lot of people out there answer the question, am I strong? Also guys, last thing I wanna mention before we get into the training, the good stuff, sponsor of today's video, actually sponsor of my channel in general, Legend London Jeans. This is one of the companies that I've worked with for a good amount of time now, pretty much since, since like back in 2017, since I was in Australia. And they, I said it before and I'll say it again, they are one of my favorite brands to work with because it's kind of like, it's not just like, yeah, you know, it's okay. It's, it's not a bad product. You can come advertise on my channel. It's like, no, I fucking love your shit. Like once you kind of try these out, you can't really go back to like wearing normal stuff. Like, you know, like Zara, Calvin Klein. I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. I don't want to bad mouth it, but they're not meant for somebody who, how do you put this nicely? Somebody who actually lifts, somebody who actually can squat, you know, maybe like one plate. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't actually conform to your legs while still allowing them to like, to move and breathe and do stuff. And it's just massive around the calves while being skin tight and unmovable around the quads. I don't know what they like, they put in these. I don't know if it's like 5% spandex. Like they look and feel absolutely awesome. There actually was once when I forgot my shorts uh, to go to the climbing gym and I actually wore my jeans and I pretty much was fine. Even when I was doing like crazy shit like heel hooks and stuff, 
like my jeans, they, they held up pretty damn well. Either way, if you guys are interested, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description box below as always. Uh, but besides that, yeah, let's get a little bit into the training commentary and see what the hell is actually going on now, because I'm no longer bulking. I'm not necessarily in a contest prep just yet, so what the fuck am I doing? Okay guys, let's jump into uh, a bit of a workout commentary. This is kind of cool because I haven't done this in like a while, so it's kind of like, you know, I gotta get back in the swing of things. This is my most recent chest workout. Now, I don't wanna walk you guys through just the standard stuff like bench, you know, this is what I'm doing, this is how many reps I'm doing, it's, it's relatively standard stuff, you can see it on screen. But I do wanna walk you through a little bit of the, the theory or the conceptually what I'm doing differently right now and going forward versus what I've been doing for the last few months because it's pretty drastic. It's not like, well, I changed one exercise around or now I went from doing 10 reps to doing 12 reps. It's like, no, it's night and damn. So a good example of this, if we actually let's, let's you know take a trip down memory lane all the way back to pretty much like a month ago. This is actually a workout I did. It's gonna very well illustrate the different training styles. This is not part of my regularly scheduled programming, but I did I did wanna try something for fun. I went in the, into the gym, and uh, if you guys remember months ago, I think back in 2018 is the last time I did this, I used to talk about how sometimes it's fun for me to go in and just blast the heavy weights for uh, low reps, but do a fuck ton of sets. I would do 10 sets of three reps, and the, and the last time I did this, I think I got up to 285. All right guys, final set, 10th set, 275, three reps. I decided to kind of re-attempt this, except this time instead of doing triples, so three reps, I'm doing two reps, and I did this with 315 pounds. And there's two reasons why I did this. Number one is because, like I said, I just wanted to re-attempt what I did in the past, except try it with much heavier weights. And uh, number two is because psychologically, I've always felt that 315 for me, it was just visually, it was such a daunting weight. Like even though I have done this multiple times in the past, like 315, I hit that as my one rep max years ago, back when I was like 23 or something, back when I was pretty much still in university. So it's been a, you know, it's been a long time. Like I, I've done this weight multiple times as my one rep max or even more than that. But visually, it still was so daunting, like psychologically, like I don't know what it is about it. So I went, in, I went into the gym and I told myself like, listen, you're never gonna get past, you know, anywhere higher than, the, the, you know, any into the mid 300s or maybe the high 300s if you're still so just physically scared of like the just the visual of three plates. Oh shit, like my heart rate starts going, I start sweating, it's it's a big number. Uh, same thing for a lot of you guys out there, probably like four plates on the squat, five plates on the deadlift. It's just like a visual psychological hurdle you need to get over. So a big reason why I decided to do this is because I'm like, listen, I need to get past this. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna sit here for an hour and I'm just gonna blast this, not just for singles, but for doubles. And I'm gonna do this 10 fucking times to almost prove to yourself that like, listen, this weight that you visually are kind of like, not afraid of, but like intimidated by, it ain't shit. You can do it. You can do it 10 fucking times. You can do it for doubles 10 fucking times. If you guys have anything like that, whatever it is, maybe it's one plate or two plates or a, you know, whatever exercise you're doing doesn't have to be just the bench. Consider this, if you know you can do it, but you're still kind of intimidated, go into the gym and smash that shit for 10 fucking sets or 10 times or whatever you gotta do to prove to yourself that like, listen, visually it's a big deal, but for your body, it ain't shit. Either way, that was kind of a very long tangent, but what else is new? <laughs> Welcome to my channel. The way I was training, think about it. I was in the gym, in this case for an hour, and it's heavy and it's hard, but the volume is only 20 reps in total. I did 10 sets of two reps, that's 20 reps. If you're training normally, you know, like lifting something heavy, but not, not you know, moderate intensity, moderate weight, two sets of 10, that can take you like what, five minutes? That's actually what I've kind of gotten back into doing. Essentially, the name of the game now is bring the intensity, the weight, bring it back down, keep the frequency relatively, you know, normal. I'm not doing anything crazy, I'm not doing anything like super low, super high in frequency, but up the volume uh, dramatically. This is essentially me transitioning back kind of from the, the powerlifting side of the spectrum back to bodybuilding. And it's, guys, it is so 
fucking nice. It feels so good. Even though I'm not doing anything extravagant, you guys are probably thinking like, Igor, why are you so excited to do like four sets of 12? I'm doing, in this case, I'm doing four sets of 12 on the bench, four sets of 12 on the uh, on the overhead press. Kind of like I start my workouts with four sets of 12 on like the main compound. And then afterwards I'll go down to like three sets of 10, uh, three sets of 12. Overall, kind of treating like a standard cliche bodybuilder. Why, why so you might be wondering, why are you so excited to do the basic stuff? Well, because I haven't done it in months and it feels, uh, fuck, it feels nice. It's, it's so good, even if it's something so standard, just because I haven't done it in a while, to return to bodybuilding, return to my roots, return to what I've done for like the first, you know, for a decade more of training for me as like a bodybuilder since I was 14. But anyways, I don't wanna ramble on too much. Essentially what I'm trying to say is that right now my, uh, my workout strategy has shifted drastically from high intensity, high frequency, pretty fucking low volume, up to moderate frequency, uh, relatively moderate to high volume, and mod pretty much I'm just like the medium man, which I think a lot of, that's pretty much the name of the game when it comes to bodybuilding. When it comes to being a bodybuilder, the primary driver of hypertrophy, of muscle growth, is volume and is overall time under tension. And you just can't do that when you're lifting overly heavy when you're training for powerlifting, which is why a lot of guys out there, they may be stronger on these lifts as a powerlifter, but they're not going to be as big. Some of the biggest fuckers out there, the biggest bodybuilders, are considerably weaker than people. You know, they may have 20, 30 pounds more muscle than people who are way stronger. Again, strength and size uh, are correlated, but they're not 100% perfectly correlated. They are not the same thing. If that was the case, then guys like Jay Cutler, you know, champion Mr. Olympias, would have been benching like a fucking, you know, like 800 pounds, but that wasn't the case. Remember bodybuilding, and I stress over and over, it, it takes a pattern of a lot of things, but it's mainly working for the pump and doing repetitions. It's not about one or two or three, four reps. It's about eight to 12 repetitions, and that's how you win bodybuilding shows. Jay Cutler wasn't, wasn't a guy that sat there in the gym and, and wanted to shoot for a record number of, of reps on a bench press or a squat. So it kind of feels nice to be kind of like back to that kind of training strategy, back to my roots, back to bodybuilding, and uh, kind of like the powerlifting little, little thing I did for a while, it was fun, but at my core, I am a physique athlete, not a strength athlete, and it's, uh, it's really nice to be like back to normal. Okay guys, the final part of this video, and let's be honest, pretty much 80% of the reason uh, why you guys probably clicked on this video, we are going to be analyzing uh, the question, and trying to answer the question, am I strong? But not just me, here we're using myself as an example, but you, are you strong? And if so, how strong are you? You know, we've all heard the terms like intermediate, beginner, advanced, all this stuff being thrown around, but what does that actually mean? It's also kind of complicated because you know, one level of strength might be different from someone else depending on their body weight. Someone who weighs 220 pounds, you know, for them, if they lift the same as a person who's 180 pounds body weight, you know, how impressive that lift is, is going to be drastically different. So, you know, sometimes it can get a little bit complicated and today I want to break it all down using myself as an example. Most recently, in my previous video, we talked uh, about how in 2019, so, you know, this year, uh, I worked up to a 335 paused uh, bench press. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna be using the paused bench press as the lift that we're talking about, but the same logic completely, everything I say is going to apply to any lift, whether it be the regular bench press, the squat, the deadlift. So before we go any further, the main uh, resource that we are going to be utilizing in this video for an objective kind of like measurement or standard of strength uh, is going to be a website called symmetricstrength.com. Uh, there's a lot of websites that do something similar to this where essentially you put in, you just plug in uh, your body weight and then it spits out like certain strength standards on all the major lift, deadlift, squat, bench, whatever. Uh, pretty much like what you need, what you need to hit in order to achieve each level of strength, whether it be like, hey, you're a beginner, uh, ad advanced, elite, intermediate, you know, work, whatever it may be. There's a lot of websites that do this, but this one, it is my favorite because it has a little bit more, uh, it really gets down to the nitty gritty and there's a lot more actual options, a lot more like levels of strength. It's not just the typical beginner, advanced, uh, sorry, beginner, intermediate, advanced, elite, that's it. It's like you know, there's a little bit, you can get a little bit more in depth. So the really awesome thing about this website is that it really does a lot of the work for you. For example, in my case, if I go and I plug in uh, my most recent body weight when I uh, did uh, that bench press PR attempt 
uh, just a few weeks ago when I was 200 pounds. You go in, you plug that, uh, you set the actual increment down to one, so it's not five or 10. You don't wanna do multiples of five or 10. Like I wanna get down all the way to the nitty gritty, down to the end of, you know, one pound at a time. In this case, I am somewhere on the spectrum between advanced and exceptional. So I'm kind of in between there, working my way uh, to exceptional. It's almost like I've achieved you know, the advanced level and now I'm gaining experience points, again, just like an RPG game, uh, trying to get to the next level. And I think this, this, this is another reason why I really like this website, because it seems very accurate. For example, if you actually go in and you read uh, the, the description of the strength classifications, uh, when it comes to exceptional, it says, Lifters in this category have typically taken a consistent structured approach to diet and strength training for the majority of their adult lives, which it sounds exactly like me. Like that is eerily, uh, eerily accurate. And they are competitive at their regional level. Uh, for many lifters, this level uh, is near the maximum genetic potential without the use of performance enhancing drugs, which once again sounds very similar to me. I mean, I've competed in powerlifting just kind of like for fun on like a local, you know, like entry level, uh, regional level. But obviously, if I were to go up to like uh, higher levels, like we're talking competing on a state or national or even international level, yeah, at that point, I would get. Uh, I pretty much would get demolished. Now this sounds cool and all, but there's still kind of a, there's a little bit of a problem. You see, in my case, I am somewhere between advanced and exceptional, between third, you know, 313 and 358. Obviously, I just recently hit 335. That's kind of a big range. In the beginning, you're gonna be just jumping, you know, gonna be jumping levels all the time. When you start out going from like untrained to beginner to novice, whatever, you're gonna be going like, you're gonna be jumping level to level. But eventually, after a certain amount of time, you're not gonna be jumping between level to level you know, that fast. And eventually it's gonna take months, or once you get to a high level, it could potentially take you years. And at that point, you're no longer moving between levels. Now we have to start looking in between the two levels, and it's almost like, a, again, kinda of like an RPG, kinda of like a video game, gaining experience points, or in our case, percentage, and I'll explain that in a minute, uh, percentage of the next level. Let me walk you through pretty much the way I do it. So. 2014, uh, my first powerlifting competition uh, ever. I was like 23, 24, something. I was pretty much bulking. Uh, this is right before, it's the winter, right before my first men's physique or bodybuilding show ever. Uh, this is before I was even doing YouTube. I, this is just uh, this is just Igor back in college lifting uh, for fun. So at the time, I weighed uh, 192 pounds and my first ever uh, official maximum pause bench press came out to 275 pounds on the pause bench press. Now that's my body weight, my weight, and E weight. Uh, what I'm using in this case would be E for exceptional. Again, the next goal that I'm trying to hit, trying to work my way towards is, is exceptional. So if I were to go and I were to plug in 192 pounds into that formula, into that website, it would spit out that for me to be exceptional at a body weight of 192 pounds, I would need to bench press. I need about 350. And in this case, this actually comes out to 79%. So I'm 79% of the way to exceptional. Uh, next up in 2015, this is my next powerlifting competition I ever did. At this time, I bulked up a bit more. I was 200 pounds, but actually, I didn't do that great. At this time, I only hit. 285 pounds on the bench press, but before you guys start attacking me, like Igor, you told me the whole year you gained eight pounds in weight, but you barely put 10 pounds on your bench press. I actually had mono when I competed uh, in this. I got sick like a month before, and I was pretty much telling myself like, well, I already paid for it. Fuck it, might as well do it. So, uh, you know, take this with a grain of salt. I was definitely not at my best. And once again, if you apply the same logic, you take 200 pounds, you plug it into the symmetric strength uh, website, this metric strength formula, this actually comes out that 358, 358 pounds would be an exceptional weight. And in my case, 285 is a percentage of 358. This actually comes out to 80%. So, you know, I only went up 1% in one year, 1% closer to my goals. But again, mono, so don't blame me too hard. But fortunately, retribution did come uh, uh, did come back strong. In 2016, this is uh, right before Ascension Season 2, my, I think it was my third ever men's physique show where I actually placed uh, second. I weighed 204 uh, pounds. At the time, was the biggest and heaviest that I have 
um, ever been. And the weight I lifted was 320 pounds. This felt nice. You know, so after, going, after barely going up 10 pounds year to year to jump uh, 35 pounds, yeah, fucking retribution. And once again, if we actually plug in a 204 into the, uh, the symmetric strength, this comes out to 360. Notice that these numbers, they're all changing a little bit because what's considered exceptional is different depending on your body weight. 192 is later than 204, and therefore to me, for me to be considered exceptional, I have to lift a little bit less uh, than I would at a heavier body weight. This actually brings me to 89 percent of the way to my exceptional uh, exceptional weight my exceptional uh, goal and finally guys most recently uh, I actually weighed in I'm gonna, I'm gonna get real nitty-gritty I weighed at 199.6 pounds 335 PR on the pause bench press uh, so the exceptional weight is the same as it was in 2015 it's just 358 again your exception you know whatever your strength level is uh, the objective standard is going to be the same, assuming the same body weight. So 200 and more or less 200 pounds. This actually comes out, 335 is a percentage of 358, comes out to 94%. And this, this is where my strength is at, you know, right now, uh, for the moment. And guys, this is it. This is how I objectively analyze my strength. Either way, that's it. I'm out of breath. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, this is pretty much the last video where we're going to be talking about anything related to the bulk or strength. This is it. There's a good chance the next video you guys see, I'm not, I'm not setting this in stone just yet, but there's a good chance the next video you guys may see may be the official start to my competition prep. Uh, or not. I don't know. I'm going to keep you guessing. Either way, see you next time.